Are you wondering what the best strategy for your upcoming deal is? Learn from the best. For this lesson, we are going to dive into the best negotiators worldwide and what we can learn from them. We will teach you what we can learn from businessmen and former presidents from all over the world to close better deals today. Ready to be inspired? Let's go. Warren Buffett. With an estimated wealth of $90 billion, he has made no enemies and can drive around freely in his modest 2006 Cadillac without any security deed. Being extremely successful and well-liked by all is a super rare combination and one that is worth studying and learning. Mr. Buffett is well known for doing his homework. He never relies on past experiences or sheer intuition. He studies. He has said his favorite activity is sitting in a quiet space, reading and studying. Many experienced negotiators are often underprepared. Instead, they rely almost exclusively on history and their gut feeling. This often backfires. Mr. Buffett knows that every negotiation is different, even if the negotiating parties are the same. He never trusts his past success to guarantee future success. This is very rare and admirable and wise. What can we learn from Warren? Your integrity is very important. Mr. Buffett is quoted as saying to Goldman Sachs employees, I won't fire you if you lose money, but I will if you lie. Manage to stay humble. Finally, stay willing to take advice as well as give it. William Urey. When you're the co-founder of the Harvard Program of Negotiation and also a distinguished fellow of the Harvard Negotiation Project, it's hard to keep a low profile. Over the years, William has become known as one of the biggest and best negotiators in the world. He has stepped in to settle all kinds of feuds, from disputes between corporate conglomerates to international conflicts in the Middle East. He's been seen around at the White House a fair bit and he offers his expertise and training to a huge range of professionals, including business executives, business leaders, military officers and corporate organizations. What can we learn from William? The skill to negotiate is often broader than you expect. You can apply the skill in different industries and situations. Try to learn as soon as possible how to negotiate with people from other cultures. Our lesson about how people around the world negotiate will help you learn more. Finally, like William does, always aim for the highest. Herb Cohen. For more than three decades, Herb Cohen has been a practicing negotiator. His clients have included business executives, entrepreneurs, sports and theatrical agents, plus large corporations, as well as governmental agencies such as the Department of State, FBI, CIA, the US Conference of Majors and US Department of Justice. Unlike some theorists, he was actively involved in the negotiations that settled the NFL player strike and the General Motors mobile litigation and also participated in the START army control negotiations with the Soviet Union. He started formally teaching the subject of negotiations during a two-week course for attorneys in 1963, sponsored by an insurance company. It was then he was using the terms win-win, win-lose, lose-lose for the first time. What can we learn from Herb? Make sure you keep up to date with the latest theory and negotiation trends but never stop negotiating yourself. Follow your heart. Herb used his skills to support groups he had sympathy for. Theodore Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt is well known for many things. His Citizen in a Republic speech is one of the most famous in American history. He also famously delivered a 90-minute speech soon after he was shot by an innkeeper in 1912. It takes more than that to kill a bull moose. He reassured his audience, referring to the name of its progressive independent party. Roosevelt was just that, as stubborn as a bull moose, unwilling to budge on the issues that were important to him. He also was famed for his soft side. In fact, 
his act of mercy toward a wounded black bear on a hunting trip made him the subject of jokes in the press and led to the creation of a teddy bear. What can we learn from Theodore? Pick your battles, try to move as little as possible on variables that are important for your negotiation outcome. And show compassion in the deal-making process, especially if the negotiations between parties that have a long-term relationship. Henry Kissinger. Members of the Nixon administration will go down in history for many things, but few of them are positive. Henry Kissinger, however, is the notable exception in his capacity of Secretary of State and National Security Advisor to both the Nixon administration and the Ford administration, Kissinger weathered adversity and came out of top. From establishing diplomatic relations with China to diffusing geopolitical tensions with the Soviet Union, his actions ushered in peace in a time of American discord. The world's best negotiators altered the course of global history, whether through toppling evil governments or preventing potential war. Though we may not think about it often, these negotiators prevented bloodshed and ushered in eras of peace. Both in America and around the world, what can we learn from Henry? Invest in your relationship with clients. People negotiate, not companies. Switch between zooming in and zooming out during negotiation was one of the top tricks Henry was using to achieve his deal results he was wanting. The late Nelson Mandela will certainly be remembered as one of the best negotiators in history. He was the greatest negotiator of the 20th century, wrote professor and program of negotiation chairman Robert H. M. Nukin. In his chapter on Nelson Mandela, M. Nukin cites Mandela's patience, tenacity, pragmatism and strategic thinking. He rejected the simple-minded notion that the one must either negotiate with the devil or forcibly resist. He did both. He was willing to make concessions, but not about what was most important to him. With respect to his key political principles, he was unmovable. What we can learn from Nelson Mandela is keep the end in mind and keep your patience. It took Mandela a decades to achieve his goals and make concessions in order to achieve your wanted negotiation outcome directly. Chris Voss, it's not me bringing emotion in, it's already there. It's the elephant in the room. There's this monstrous creature in the middle of every negotiation. It's what we want and it's based on what we care about. Each one of us, we make every single decision based on what we care about and that makes decision-making, by definition, an emotional process. Voss spent more than two decades in the FBI, during which he worked on more than 150 international hostage cases. Eventually, he was chosen among thousands of agents to serve as the FBI's lead international kidnapping negotiator, a position he held for four years. Voss fine-tuned his negotiation methods over the years, allowing him to save hundreds of lives. For example, Voss recalled one day in 1988, standing in a narrow hallway out of an apartment in Harlem in New York City. Three heavily armed fugitives were inside. Voss, his job, convinced the fugitives to give up without a fight and with no telephone number to call. Voss was forced to speak through the apartment door. He did so for six hours with no response. He began to question if anyone was even listening inside. Suddenly, the door opened. A woman walked out, followed by all three fugitives. Not a single shot fired. No loss of life. Not even a harsh word. How did he do it? using what he describes as the late-night FM DJ voice. Voss repeated variations of the following. It looks like you don't want to come out. It seems like you worry that if you open the door, we'll come in with guns blazing. It looks like you don't want to go back to jail. Afterwards, Voss was curious as what to specifically convince the fugitives to emerge. 
We didn't want to get caught or get shot, but you calmed us down, they said. We finally believed you wouldn't go away, so we just came out. This story perfectly illustrates the value of emotional intelligence, the ability to identify, understand and manage emotions. That's why many people consider him the best negotiator in the world. What we can learn from Chris, no person on earth is capable to close a deal only based on ratio. Your understanding of psychology and interrelational contacts has a great impact on deal results. Learn more in our lesson about this subject. These top-notch negotiators each have their own style and that's for a reason. You should learn from the best but always pay attention to your own preferences and personality.